Hello everybody, welcome back to Itzy Klein's channel. Um, today I want to cover a technique that I haven't gotten a proper name as of yet. Um, it's definitely not my own technique. I've seen quite a lot of different people use it. And yeah, like it, it's this color shift type of technique. And, and depending on what you use to layer between your clay, you get quite a different look between all of the options. So um, for this technique, it's mostly translucent clay that you make use of um, in terms of your clay. So what I have right here is Sculpey's translucent, not the white translucent, just a normal translucent. I have conditioned it just to the point where they stop cracking, um, just so they can be lifted up and moved without breaking. Um, they're not fully conditioned yet. Um, but that's because for this technique, you're going to be mixing in some alcohol inks into your um, work. So in terms of alcohol ink, I've been getting quite a lot of questions about what you can use. And when it comes to alcohol ink, there's quite a lot of options. So you do have the Pinata brand of alcohol ink, which you can use. Um, I've heard that Pinata is more color fast and I've only used their green, yellow, and orange this far. Um, I haven't used their reds or pinks or blues, but what I do see is that the way that the color looks prior to going to the oven is the way that it looks when it comes out of the oven. Another brand you can make use of is the Ranger brand. Um, so this is the one that I personally have started off with just because this brand tend to be a little bit more accessible because you find this brand all over. Um, this Pinata one you can only get from, I think it's called po Poxy Art or something like that, but it, it's a local website. I'll link it down below. You you can't find this one in your P&As, in your um, country crafts and stamps and all these kinds of like general supply stores. I've never seen Pinata anywhere except at Epoxy Art. Um, then the Ranger brands, they tend to be a little bit more all over. Both of these work on the premise that there's a liquid inside of this bottle with a very thin spout that you then can drop out. Um, so the end result of this is that it feels like you use less. One of these bottles lasts you forever. Like this blue I've had from right the beginning. And its level is now only sitting about there if I'm using if I'm holding it level to the surface and it levels out. So yeah, like it lasts forever. <laughs> and um, it goes a little bit faster if you use techniques where you like spread the ink on the surface kind of thing, just because naturally you use a little bit more. But with these techniques, you tend to use like one or two drops. For the, for this t size of clay, um, you would probably use about two drops. For this one, about one. Um, these bigger ones, maybe three or four drops, but it, it's very m minimal. Then, you can absolutely also use of alcohol ink based markers. So these are Copics. Um, I've purchased them yonks ago <laughs> when I was still making bears. Because you get this um, attachment for Copics with the, the sharp point that it fits into like this holder thing. And then you've got a, a can of, of bottled air and you spray it out and then it works the same way than what a spray paint a gun kind of thing work. Um, but yeah, so this is alcohol ink based. You do get cheaper brands of this. However, bear in mind that with these alcohol inks they are not what they call color fast so if they're exposed to sunlight if they're exposed to uv light over time their colors will shift and change um if there's other uh, conditions that could also cause a color change so if with ranger ink for example i dislike using their pinks i've tried two of their pinks now a more of a magenta color and more of a flamingo pink color both of them turn like fluorescent orange in the oven <laughs> so they don't even keep their color until the piece is finished um but yeah so 
the, the color does change of these things. So if you're making a piece that you would like your customer to be using for years and years to come and never change, then it might be more advisable to go for the higher priced things because they are more color fast. So these Copic markers, for example, I know of people who've made artwork with them that they look exactly the same as when the day they were created years and years ago. Um, so the Copics tend to be very color fast, but your cheaper brands, your no-name brands especially, you don't have that guarantee because they are no name for a reason and they're cheaper for a reason. So with Copics specifically, um, the reason why they are so expensive is partially the color fastness and the other reason is that inside of these pens they have a special patented cushion design that keeps the ink fresh and liquid for much longer than any of the no-name brand type pens. Um, some of them might last you a year or two but Copics, I have Copics that I've had for like four or five years and they're still fine. So if you're in it for the long run, by all means invest in the colors that you're going to be using with Copics. You don't have to go out and buy the full range set that's like 3000 Rand. <laughs> by all means, you don't need it. If you're an artist, you're going to need it because artists can't really mix colors the way that we can in clay. So if you buy a color of the rainbow, um, so that means, well, you can actually just buy three colors, a magenta type of color, cyan type color, and a yellow type color. And you can mix all the other colors except, of course, black and white, but you wouldn't want black and white for the techniques that you typically use this for in clay. <laughs> then the other thing that's very important with this technique is that you need a opaque layer to really make it come out. So that opaque layer can come in the form of um, these uh, mica powder sachets. So these I got from Naughty Pixie. They were part of a sampler set. Um, they're really not that expensive and these packets have been holding me for about a year now. So they, they're starting to become a little bit little. There's, there's about that much left in a packet now. Um, but honestly, they are very good quality, very color fast, behaves well in the oven, doesn't change color. And it's really, I, I really like this brand. Um, their pots tend to be a little bit expensive, but honestly, these little sachets, even though they're a little bit annoying to use, um, they work fantastic and they're very affordable and you get a different, a whole host of different colors. So in my little pack, I got five colors. It was this bronze russet, strawberry cheesecake, flame gold, black onyx, and then the white luster. So you can see I use the white quite often. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could also use um, what they call pearlescent pigment. So this pigment is a little bit, you can see here and how it behaves in the bottle. The flake itself is a little bit... Um, bigger than what you would typically expect from white mica powder um, so this tend to like go everywhere because of the flake being a little bit bigger and you need to be careful not to put too much on your clay because if you put too much and you cover the entire surface it's very difficult to get the pieces to stick to each other um, so just be mindful of this but also as you can see this one is a very affordable offer, a very affordable option in comparison to mica powders, which, as you can get, can as you know, can get quite expensive for quite a little bit. Um, something else that you could use is a white ink. So I've got these two brands. One is from Ranger. One is from Pinata. Both of them work very similar. I really don't have a preference between them for the sake of this particular technique. Um, if you were to do something else with this ink, so let's say you want to do Petri dish art or something like that, I very much recommend the Pinata brand over the Ranger brand because the Ranger brand is what they call a mixative. So what this is, is essentially small particles suspended in the, um, the, the alcohol ink. So if you were to shake this bottle, it'll come in a second. 
eight. No, it won't come. <laughs> there we go. So if you were to shake this bottle, you'll hear there's a ball inside of here. That's because this ink is a suspension ink. It's not, the, the, the color of this ink isn't part of the liquid. Whereas with the pinata one, it is also opaque but it is part of the liquid. So this one doesn't have a ball because there isn't anything to settle inside of this liquid. It's all one big, it's, it's more cohesive. So when it comes to techniques different than this particular technique, um, you would want this one rather than this one because this one tend to like separate the pieces. So if you were to do Petri dish art, which is in resin, not in clay, hey? Um, but if you were to do Petri dish art, what this does is that the white particle separates and goes settle in the bottom. And it doesn't do that like cloudy business that happens in the resin when you drop the white ink in, which this one does do because it's a more cohesive liquid. So yeah, enough rambling about alcohol ink. <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do um, is just explain my process a little bit because these pieces are going to be for my own shop and orders that I've gotten. Um, so these three pieces are going to be colored pink and purple and a very nice bluish greenish color. Um, it's not quite turquoise, it is, it's a funny color, here it is. But um, they're going to be colored with Copics. Then these three pieces are going to be colored with alcohol ink, these three pieces with Copics as well as some mica powder. Um, then these three are going to get layered with white, these ones also with white and silver, and these ones with gold. Um, the reason why I'm doing it all separated is because every technique has a different sort of effect in a finished product. So I want to show you guys how it looks. Cool, so um, let's start with this one. So with the Copics, it is literally just a situation of you color on top of the clay and you get as much color on there as what you can. And then once that's on there, you let it dry and then run it through your pasta machine to mix it up. That, that's it. That's the full extent of it. <laughs> So now on to the alcohol inks. So what I'm going to be using is this one and this very nice lime that has been through uh, quite a lot in its life and then the sailboat blue. Ah, something I do want to highlight is over time you will see that your bottles get quite messy. You can by all means try and clean them up, that's fine, but it's also normal for them to get messy. They do make these tiny little spots, which will affect the way that your color looks at the end of the day. Um, so just be mindful to not um, let those spots just fall anywhere where it would make trouble. Because they are essentially concentrated color drops. So with this lime green, because it's such a light color, I tend to put an extra dot or two on. Okay, um, so the pinata tip also looks a little bit different. Um, this is another reason why I prefer pinata, because as you can see, it tends to be a little bit cleaner than what the Ranger ink tips do. Um, and they are a little bit easier to control once you get used to this different tip. Cool, now they are on there. So what you need to do now is make use of a brush. Where is my dark brush? There we go. Um, let me just quickly clean this one. Sorry, I had to go do that off camera. Um, so how you clean your alcohol ink brushes is you get this alcohol blending solution from um, Ranger 
which what I usually do is I just go to the bathroom in the basin. As you can see, my hand's still wet. <laughs> um, and then I, I drop a few drops into the palm of my hand and then just swirl my brush inside of it. Um, and that gets most of the alcohol ink right out and you rinse it immediately so it doesn't color your hand. So as you can see, I'm safe. <laughs> cool. So starting with a lighter color, you just mush it about. That is to allow the alcohol ink to dry properly faster. Um, because if you run this through your pasta machine, just like so, all this alcohol ink will get squished out between your layers and it will stain your blades if you have the plastic tip blades as what the new Atlas models has. Onto a darker color. Oh, I can see there's a bit of fluffies up in there. So this is life. And then lastly, blue. So I don't mind so much about this color being tinted ever so slightly more towards the green side. Um, because it would make this palette a little bit more cohesive, which is nice. And there you have it. Um, so now my brush is full of alcohol ink. I can absolutely just leave it to dry like this and then use the alcohol blending solution to clean it next time. Otherwise, I can go and clean it immediately with the same um, process. But at the end of the day, the result is much the same in my experience. So I'm just going to carry on. Just uh, make sure to put your brush in a place where it doesn't touch stuff with that tip because alcohol ink is extremely aggressive with its color. <laughs> so these ones, I am going to be using this... Um, Naughty Pixie Dust. I'm just going to move you over here. There we go. And then you just take a little brush. Oh, I don't have clean small brushes. This one will do. You dip it inside of the packet and brush it onto the clay. So as you can see, there's particles that's loose on top. Um, try and work them into the clay before you get some new particles. Because any particle that's not sticking to the clay is a risk to get stuck into your pasta machine. Um, I would actually advise you that once you've brushed this on, to wipe this down with another clean brush just to make sure there isn't any loose particles because otherwise you'll see particles inside of your pasta machine for weeks. Just a little bit more there. Cool. Brushed out real good. Okay. And then the same pink and purple is what I used for this. I'm going to be using there, but this lady wanted um, pink and purple only. She didn't want any of the green. So as you drag the brush, you'll see that there's some clay residue that comes off. Um, this is because the alcohol ink sort of eats at the clay so it makes that first layer a little bit softer so when you drag your brush over it tends to accumulate on the tip so you can by all means um, just sort of dab it off so you see there there's a little bit of residue still left over so you can just do this sort of motion to get it off um, or you can of course not drag your brush at all like this but just keep dabbing in order to get the color on there that's also a strategy that will keep your tip clean cool i am going to put through the put these bad boys through my pasta machine and then i'll see you guys shortly all right all mixed up and uh here we go so this one is the one with the mica powder um let me just move your view a little bit this way 
mica powder, the Copic marker, Copic marker, alcohol ink, and then these three are also Copic markers. Um, so now for the different techniques. So um, I think I'm going to start with the ones with white because that means I have less chance for color contamination. So I'm just going to move all my bits and bobs to the side here and then start with these pieces. So what I'm first going to do is create a Skinner blend with this one um, just because it is a different technique and you need to do it a little bit differently than the other one that I want to do. Um, so yeah, so how you create a Skinner blend and what a Skinner blend is. Let, let's start there, let's start there. So a Skinner blend is when you combine and fold your clay through the pasta machine in a particular way so that you have this um, color shift from one color to the other. So I like this color progression. So what I'm going to do now is just fold over my pieces and then squish them a little bit into a bit of a triangular shape on this side. Fold this one over and then work it so that it fits in there but it's still a bit of a color of it on its own here we go and then this last one fitting into that corner there cool um, I'm not ever really scientific about these things. If you want a particular color progression, like a rainbow, something like that, you would have to be a little bit more uh, precise with your ratios and how things mix and match with each other. But I usually just like whatever comes out of the pasta machine without any plans. Um, so to that end, let's take you guys over to my pasta machine. All right, here we are. So um, I've got my piece here. Um, because I've been squishing it, I know that the surface is no longer just the number zero. So I'm just going to run it through the pasta machine again one time. So this misformation at the tops, don't worry about it. Um, what you can do is stick something on the edge so it stays this small. So what I usually do, i just grab one that's not going to mess with the camera too much is I just take a, a standard block of clay still in this packaging and stick it in there. Um, so now you can see my piece fits in here in the gap very nicely. And then you just keep folding it up and rolling it through again. So as you can see now, it's it's not very obvious with this color progression I've got here because <laughs> they are very close to each other. Um, but there is a shift from the one side to the other, even though I've only rolled it through a few times. Um, very important though, is that you need to turn it around as well and run it through a few times. Because every pasta machine even though these blades look like they are equal to each other and equally far apart from each other, they are not. Um, so if you run it through a few times this way around, you get a, a bit more of a uh, even blend with fewer run-throughs. And there we go. Um, so as you can see here that mess that I had at the top has evened out a little bit just because of how the clay has been shifting and this is perfectly now for the next step so I'm gonna move you guys back and we're back so since this is now more of a white background the camera can pick up the color shift a little bit better so you can see here where it goes from the purple the mica and then the pink very nicely and it's a very gradual shift so that's nice Whoa, you see there so that little boppy there that's because a small bit of the blue was hanging about and I didn't spot it somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, that happens. It's perfectly fine. It's very little at the moment. Um, I'll just keep an eye on that. So since that's that side, I'm going to use this side. Oh, I see there's another one. 
Ooh, fun. <laughs> cool. So now um, for this, what we need to do is take our white ink. Put a few drops on here. You can sort of make lines, whatever, because you need, do need quite a bit of this for this. Um, where do I put my brush now? There we go. Here's a nice clean brush. And then just paint the surface with your ink so that there is as even a cover as you can get it. So you do need to work fairly quickly with this because the, the white ink do tend to get tacky quite quickly. Um, once it does, you can add a little bit more white ink to make it fluid again. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'm going to add a bit more because I can see I've got a little bit little there. So you see how the white ink flows into the existing white ink quite readily. That's just alcohol ink being alcohol ink. <laughs> it's the reason you get those uh, liquid art kind of techniques. Okay. Then I'm going to do the rest of them. So I'm just going to shift my camera because it will be a bit hard to shift my clay right now. And then rinse and repeat essentially. Cool. Um, I'm going to go clean my brush now in a second um, before I come back. But uh, yeah, there we have it. Um, something I do want to just mention about the white alcohol ink is that sometimes depending on the ink that you use underneath, it picks up a bit of color from that ink underneath. So don't be too shocked when that happens it's perfectly fine for it to happen and uh, yeah the big the mica powder is where the difference is going to come in so if there is discoloration happening on your ink layer just trust the process <laughs> cool i'm gonna go uh, wash this brush and then i'll be back all right we're back so um i'm going to now I think these layers are still quite wet, yeah. So I'm going to leave them to get dry and I'm going to move on to the other one. Um, let's just see if we can move this one. There we go. Cool. So let's move into this space here. And we take these three puppies over here. Cool. Okay, you guys can see fine. Okay, so now I'm going to take my uh, bronze russet color and a brush. Ooh, I need to either get a new brush or start cleaning my brushes. <laughs> I think this one will be fine. Yeah, even though the tip is looking dark from the pastels I've used it for to be fine cool so now this one I haven't put any alcohol ink on because this technique makes use of only mica powder which has a strong color so this um, bronze russet color as you as I wipe it on you can see that it's got a very strong um, coverage so what I mean with that is that you can't see really the color underneath it's just the bronze. <laughs> it's all you see. <laughs> yeah, I see. I've got a bit of a hair there. There we go. So again, same as with the when we did the pink. When you've got these loose pigments sitting on top, just keep working at them to push them through okay don't worry about having a absolute full coverage so as you can see there there is still some sections where the clay peeks through you're going to need those sections to um, create 
a bondage between your layers because as it stands right now um, if you put another layer of clay on top here it's not going to want to stick you're going to have to really work it to stick which is what we're going to be doing but not having a hundred percent full coverage really helps with creating that stick I'm going to close this packet for now. So now I'm going to layer them over each other. So I usually don't have like a plan. I just pick them up and layer them down. Very important is to try and make sure that you don't trap bubbles in between. So it doesn't matter that they're not perfectly lined up because that is all part of the technique. Cool. Then we have them stacked on top of each other. So then I'm going to take a tissue blade, just cut them. So you see how they don't stick really to each other. This is fine. Just try and keep them sort of together-ish. And then cut them again. So I always try to layer things so that there's um, different weirdness on different sides. So you've got this be here and this be there. So that when, once you start pushing them, that they start working together nicely. So now we need to start forming our lock. So you can push and pull and carry on. So what I usually do is I press from the sides while keeping my thumb on the top. So you'll see sometimes they start coming apart like that. Just try and make sure not to trap bubbles when that happens and just push them back together again as much as possible. And then I usually lay them down on my work surface to work at them further. So I tend to sort of squish and pull and push on all sides so that you see how the lines have now distorted. That's exactly the technique that we want. Well, the effect. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, effect. It's better than the technique. So now you see, as we are shifting them, what's happening is that the clay sections, they're shifting a little bit. There's still spaces like this where it doesn't want to adhere properly, um, but it'll come better. Because what's happening now is inside is that that mica layer is getting shifted and pulled and pulled open so that like what's happening here, there's more and more space where the clay can touch each other and stick to each other. You see that one that was wanting to pull open, it's a little bit better now. See there. Push, push, push. Just keep pushing it. Cool. So in the final state, what I like to do is making it long on the edges where the layers are. So here where the layers are, so that the sides where it's solid colors are smaller because that exposes the layers inside a little bit because we're going to be cutting it that way. So I'm just going to set this bad boy aside for a second to rest because as we all know, clay gets soft and sticky and then it becomes moody. Uh, where's my wet wipe gone now? Here we go. Just gotta clean this off because we don't want gold into our other pieces. Cool. So let's bring our first white ink piece back here. Yeah? Cool. 
So at this point it's still tacky, but when I touch it, it doesn't come off on my finger too much. So that, that's the point where we want it to be dry too. So now we take a nice clean brush. This was the one I washed just now, so it's still wet. Ah, oh, let's use this one. So this one I'm going to use my uh, silver sparkle um, pearlescent pigment. Now remember what I said about this one. It can get dangerous. <laughs> so I'm not going to put on too too much. Just just enough. Okay. Now I'm going to roll it up. So remember our color progression now goes from pink to purple here. So there's now two ways you can roll this up and you'll get a different technique for either one. You can either roll it from the one color to the other color, meaning that your spiral is going to be going from pink into the pearlescent pink, mica powder pink, into the purple. Or you can roll it this way. So then your spiral on the one side is going to be just one color throughout, and then on the other side just one color throughout. You could then cut it different ways as well. Um, I'll show you what both of them look like. But what I like to do is to roll it from the one color into the other color so that you always have all colors present at all times. But if you wanted to do like a, a color shift kind of thing where it, it, it progresses down your pieces from one color to the other, then you would want to roll it the other way. So just as you normally do your jelly rolls, just make sure to keep that roll tight throughout. Oh, got some nice hairs there. Let me just look. Cool. There we go. So now I'm just going to gently roll this roll to make sure that all the layers stick towards each other as well as to lengthen it a little bit so that I can now bring it together this way around and then twist it gently roll it to adhere properly trying at this point in time not to lengthen it it must try and stay together so every now and again what you can do is just push it fatter and then push it down proper so you've got that nice squish and then I'm going to be working it into a square So now, if you remember right, our twist is now sitting this way inside of the square with the bottom part sitting this side and then the, where the fold was over in the snake on this side. So I'm just going to set this one down for now and then move on to these ones. So with these ones, I'm going to be layering them with white mica powder cool just moving it over here I'm grabbing my boop where did I put my brush now okay there it is so I've got these uh, pots from stencil art I believe it was but uh, I do not recommend them <laughs> Because you need to be very careful with them. Like if they just sit on your desk and do nothing, that's fine. But if you travel with them, they tend to spill over the edges. Which is testament with how they get delivered to use. Wrapped up in like tape and uh, bank baggies and all sorts of things. Just to try and contain <laughs> the chaos. So with these ones, you can be a little bit more uh, deliberate with how you layer them.
cool so now what I'm going to do is uh, first close this bad boy because just now I knock it now what I'm going to do is layer these guys over each other and again don't worry about being absolutely perfect with this And then just make sure I wipe off all the residue mica powder there. And then I'm going to be rolling them through the pasta machine on a number zero, all three of them together. So now you see it's got these nice little cracks happening. So then what I'm going to do is from the one side, roll them up. So now what is happening is that it's got the three layers going around in the spiral. And roll that a little bit thinner. Trying to keep the sausage equal. And then do the same thing as what we've done with our color shifting one. Trying to keep it nice and flat. Forming that into a square. all the way around cool so now we have uh, three little squares <laughs> so I'm going to quickly wipe down the surface again just to get rid of all of this white So I'm going to start with this one. So as you can see, our layers is running across this side. So I'm going to cut it this way around. Um, where's my, there we go. So I'm using the dust blade just because it isn't very flexible um, in comparison to the Sculpey blade. So the Sculpey blade, it flexes for nothing. Um, so with this one, I'm guaranteed as it's going down, it's going to stay straight. So then I take cuts that's a little bit thicker than what I want the end result to be. So if I'm going to roll this on a two, then I'll take cuts a little bit thicker than that. Cool. So now I was fully expecting that to happen. So you see how our layers are being pulled apart? That's because it's purely mica powder in between here, no alcohol ink. So they do tend to want to do that. Um, what you can just do is with your fingers squish them so that they close. And then we just layer our pieces next to each other. Trying to push those caps as close as possible. Cool. Now once that's done, I usually just take my roller to roll down the whole business just a little bit. Just to make sure, because you see now more pieces have opened up. So those pieces I need to work a little bit more to get to close.
side. I'm just going to lift this one up. So as you can see now, it's uh, quite a thick piece. So what I usually do with this to get it down to my preferred number two, um, because I'm making stitch markers, just disclaimer, um, because I'm making stitch markers, I need my pieces to be quite thin so that they are very light in the works of people. Um, so what I usually do to get this to go thinner is I first roll it through on a number zero one direction, then number one another direction, and then a number two in another direction again. So that you always keep changing the way that the distortion happens because your pasta machine is always going to pull your pieces up. Um, that's if you're lazy. You can use a roller and guides to roll it down even more. Um, but yeah, so a, a pasta machine is always going to pull up. So you need to keep changing the direction it's going through in your pasta machine in order to keep this um, pattern intact as much as possible. There is going to be a little bit of distortion still, but much less than if you kept putting it through in the same direction and keep rolling it down. If you're using guides and a roller to do this, then keep changing the direction that you're rolling in. You can go any which way, really, <laughs> with a roller. It, it gives you that ability. And the more directions you end up going in, the more intact your pattern is going to be. Now, because this is translucent clay, you actually want it to be much thicker than your target um, width. Because as it's rolling down one side is going to stay static and the other side is going to shift so you would have this like sort of shift in the clay itself so i can only really show it to you after it's been baked but you can certainly see already in the difference in the patterns the way that this side is looking versus that side so that side is much more together one can say than what this side is just because this is the side that I've been working and pushing and this is the side that has been sitting on the, the, the tile and haven't been moved at all. Okay, so rolling it down quickly. Ooh. I had some white residue still inside there. I'm just going to wipe that off. Luckily with the white alcohol ink it doesn't stain so you can just wipe it off. But yeah, this is the unfortunate reality of working with inks and your pasta machine. So this was now because there was the white layer of this one um, that went through on one side and I didn't clean my pasta machine properly between running this one through cool cool so now you see most of them have stayed together quite nicely but in some places like here it's more prominent they have started coming apart so just keep an eye out for this um, it would have happened at the back as well a little bit in some places just to quickly show you guys so here, in that exact spot, you can actually see the light come through there. <laughs> so there it would then be weak um, and not adhering very nicely. So when you cut your pieces, just make sure to cut in between those pieces so that you don't include this section on your actual pieces. So I'm going to set this aside now because I'll be cutting them off camera not wasting your time um, I will show you guys the pieces afterwards of course so now on to the next one um, maybe let's move our camera a little bit this side cool so this is our spiral with the gradient if you remember correctly so spiral is going this way so what I'm going to do just to show you guys the way that the spiral works is just cut on the side of where the spiral sits one time. Ah, I actually kind of like it. 
So you see because of the mica powder it also falls apart but that's fine because we're going to do the same sort of pushing together thing as what we've done with this one. I actually like the spirals. Let's, let's cut this one in spirals. So cut it a little bit thicker than your, your final result. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, so pretty. So with these ones, it doesn't matter having to stack them in a particular way. There, you see there, there's our little blue puppy. So I'll just not use that section. I'm actually glad it's now very close to the edge. So now I also push them together just like this with my fingers, just mushing them so that there's shift happening inside. And then taking my roller, rolling that down a little bit more. Okay. So you see the, the shift is quite significant on this piece, on the one side versus the other side. You can actually see inside with this how the shift is happening. So I'm just going to run this through my pasta machine. Cool. So now with the alcohol ink being quite thick it is coming a little bit up um, and on the side it's made streaks on the surface which is perfectly fine because we can just take our wet wipe and wipe it right off you can also just cut it as is and then use a little bit of an ear buddy afterwards Oh, this is going to be absolutely stunning. Look at this one. You see how this spiral has shifted. There's its origin point. So it has shifted that way. So that entire piece, you'll be able to see that shift in the clay. Oh, it's going to be stunning. Cool. So just moving this one aside a little bit. now for this bad boy so this one you see here how our spiral is going this direction so I'm going to be cutting it from this side so that you've got that weird shift happening because now the spirals is going to be sitting this way so if you cut it it'll be like a cross section of the spiral which is going to give a very interesting effect Oh, look at that. Apologies for the weather. <laughs> I can't control it, unfortunately. Wow. Just look at those layers upon layers. Wow. Sure. This is stunning. Yo. I see there's a little bit blue dotties that came in there as well. Yo, yo, yo. This is absolutely gorgeous.
I have a feeling this is going to be my favorite one. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm just going to clean my pasta machine before rolling this one through. <laughs> okay, so what happened here was my pasta machine had a bit of a boo-boo because I was too eager to run it through after having just cleaned it. Oof, this is going to be either a big hit or a big mess. Ooh, um, so this is something I learned literally just now. If you clean your pasta machine and it's still wet from the wet wipe, if you try to put through clay that's a little bit thicker, then it's going to grab in certain portions and not in other portions. So it's going to do this like twisting thing and make this like ruffle at the bottom and make like a skirt, which is essentially what this section is all about <laughs> because it's me trying to flatten that skirt through the pasta machine again and seeing if I can save it. Um, so now there's sections of this slab that it's not at all doing what I wanted it to be doing, but quite honesty I don't hate it um, let me move you guys closer a little bit so there's sections where it's separated that is 100% because of what the pasta machine was doing was forcing it sort of to twist funky um, and then there's sections where the overlay is absolutely gorgeous like just look at those stripes over there these ones so yeah i'm gonna cut this bad boy now and see what comes out but uh yeah this is a make along and not a tutorial right <laughs> cool all right welcome back um so the light isn't the greatest right now as i can see on these pitch pieces and how the camera is throwing the color quite a bit darker than what they're looking when I'm looking with my own eyeballs um, but uh, what we have here top to bottom is the pieces with the Copic ink and the um, white alcohol ink and white um, pearlescent powder mix oh, not pearlescent powder this was actual mica powder this one is um, two of them is with Copic ink one of them with mica powder the mix inside and then um, the layers was white alcohol ink and pearlescent powder and then this one was colored with just uh, alcohol ink and layered with only mica powder nothing else um, as you can see they are similar but also distinctly different so just talking through their differences these, this one has these thin layers happening because of the fact that I stuck it through the pasta machine prior to um, rolling it up. So it was three layers on number two that was squashed to a number one and then rolled up. So you've got these like super thin lines happening. Quite a lot of these pieces came out really nicely despite the fact that the pasta machine did its boo-boo. Um, something I do like and I hope that the yes the camera does pick it up um, so light play through these pieces are exceptionally interesting um, it is always like that with this technique I absolutely adore it then with this one the layers are not quite as visible um, there is some other pieces that it's a little bit more visible because I'm, I'm making this for a, a customer so um, I had to put numbers on so with this one the, the layers is a little bit more visible um, but the number obscures it a little bit and it needs to be cleaned a little bit still oh this one has nice layers here we go here you can see nice layers this one has a nice layer section there um, but because we just rolled it by hand and rolled it to a slightly smaller sausage the layers are not quite as thin and wispy as in these pieces um, but it does also mean that light play through these pieces is quite a lot more like strong it's it's a lot more of a contrast so you get a bit more of a 
gemstone feel from this kind of technique. Now these ones, oh boy. <laughs> So as they're lying here, they look unassuming and as if they do absolutely nothing. But uh, just look at how light moves through these pieces and how it reveals the depth on the inside. Like, just look at that. Oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. And also because it was mostly mica powder being used here and not at all alcohol ink you get the view of the mica powder, powder right through the piece so you get interesting light flashes like that where it all honestly looks like molten gold running around in your clay oh i just adore this technique i adore it with this color palette i just oh i cannot get enough of this particular technique um it's definitely something that is my current favorite and yeah there we have it um i did roll a bunch of beads with the scraps rather than to roll it out and do marbles kind of thing oh no it ran away Ugh, let me fetch it because this is my favorite one <laughs> so these beads i literally just broke pieces off the um, skeleton and then rolled them the way you roll lentil beads and squashed them flat a little bit just so you don't have that point but um, just look at them oh I am so happy with how they came out here's another one isn't that gorgeous the green ones especially they are such drama queens on the inside like just look at that oh it's beautiful i'm super happy with this <laughs> really not gonna lie um and yeah that's it for this video i uh look forward to seeing the feedback on this one because this is a uh, a technique that wasn't asked for it was just something i'm currently playing with and having a lot of fun with and uh yeah remember to subscribe and like and hit that bell if you want to so that you can get notifications of my future videos i'm hartrader from itzy Klein, signing off